Community of the Sedgwell District Council Development Committee. I'm Councillor Filmer, I'm Chairman of the Committee. Um, today's meeting is actually a hybrid meeting of the committee in that the committee members are in the are in the Sedgemore room and are present uh, at Bridgewater House. Uh, they will be taking part through teams so that members of the public and other local councillors can take part virtually. Only councillors who are actually present in the room today are able to vote on the applications before us. Can I request that all participants of the meeting turn their mobile phones to off or to silent, please? And to also note that this meeting is being recorded. The format of the meeting will be as per the agenda published, and a copy of the officer presentations can be found on the committee webpage. Each application will be taken in turn. The officers will outline the application. There will then be public speaking time. All those present will remain muted until I call you to speak. Only members of the public that have registered to speak can make representation to the committee and members will then debate and decide on the application. Can I just remind members of the committee wishing to speak, can you please do that by raising your hand sort of physically in the meeting rather than doing anything electronic through the machine? Uh, during the debate, there will be a proposer and a seconder for a resolution. Members will then vote on this proposal. Only members who have been present throughout the application being considered are able to vote and they will vote for, against or abstain. The votes will then be counted and the result will be announced. I'll now ask the officers and councillors present who are taking part in the meeting to introduce themselves. So if we start with our planning officers and today that is Mr Howlett. Uh, good morning everyone, I'm Stuart Howlett. I'm the Assistant Director for Inwood Investment and Growth and I'll take you through the application presentations this morning and I can confirm I can see and hear you. Thank you very much. Uh, we then come to our legal team and that's Dawn Lehman. Thank you Chairman, my name is Dawn Lehman. I'm legal advisor to the committee and I can also confirm I can see and hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Then to Democratic Services and Leila Nicholson. Good morning everybody, my name's Leila Nicholson. I'm the committee manager for today. And if we then come to the members who are present today, starting with Councillor Grimes. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Tony Grimes, Deputy Chairman, representing Barrow and Breen. I can see and hear everything. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Betty. Good morning, Chairman. Councillor Anthony Betty of the King's Eye Ward, and I can hear and see everything. Thank you. Councillor Bolt. Good morning, Chairman and, and colleagues. Uh, Brian Bolt, Ward Member for Cannington and Wembley. And Councillor Rebens. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, colleagues. Uh, Councillor Bill Revens representing North Petherton Ward. I can confirm that I'm present in the Sedgemore room and can therefore see and hear everything. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Murphy. I think your mic may be off. That's a, oh, OK, no worries. I'll carry on. I'll come back to you, Mike. Uh, so if we come to Councillor Facey. Uh, I think, Mike, you might be off as well. Mike. Morning, Chairman. Councillor Thank Mike Facey, representing Burnham on Sea North, present in the room, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Kingham. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Yes, Councillor Stuart Kingham, Ward Member for the West Poldens, and I can hear and see all. Thank you. Councillor Glassford. Again, Councillor Glassford, I think your mic might not be on. OK, we'll get someone to come around, just make sure that's working OK for you. Councillor Pearce. Uh, good morning. Councillor Cathy Pearce, that's not, um, Westover Ward, Bridgewater. I confirm I can see and hear everyone. Excellent. Uh, we'll come back to Councillor Glassford. I'm... Thank you. Could I just check with Mr. Howlett? Did, did you hear Councillor Glassford? Not through the mic, only, no. only picked up through other people's mics. OK, we will try and sort that issue out before we move on. And again, I'll come back to Councillor Murphy. Is Councillor Murphy back with us? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. <coughs> Thank you, uh, Chair. Yes, uh, Mike Murphy uh, representing Burnham North. I can see and hear you. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, I'll come back to Councillor Glassford in a moment, but just just to mention, there are other members of the council uh, 
officers and members of the public who are present. Uh, some of those are registered to speak, some are just uh, here to attend and, and to view the meeting. Okay. Do you can want to try again, Yes, we can. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good morning, Chairman. Councillor Alec Glassford, representing Fairfax Ward Bridgewater. I can see and hear everything. Thank you very much. That's that's all members now uh, who are present have, have uh, introduced themselves. Uh, if we move on to the next, the first item on the agenda, which is apologies for absence. Uh, Mrs Nicholson, have you got details of apologies? Thank you, Chairman. Um, I've received apologies from Councillor Scott, Gibson, Hendry, Perry and Granter. And all of the members are present, so that's uh, all members of the committee accounted for. Uh, if we move on to item two on the agenda, which is urgent business. Uh, I've not been advised of any urgent business that isn't already covered on our agenda today. Item three is, is public speaking time. Uh, for members of the public who have registered to speak, uh, you'll have three minutes to address the committee. Uh, what we'll do is the application that you're speaking on will be introduced by the planning officers. I'll then ask you to uh, to speak and make your address to the committee. You have, as I say, the three minutes. When there's one minute of that time left to go, you should hear the, the bell rung. Mrs Nicholson, if you give us a bell ring. Just so you know what you're waiting, what you're expecting. Excellent. So once you hear that, that means you've got one minute left to go. Uh, and if you can draw your conclusion, your comments to a conclusion by the end of that minute, that would be very helpful. Uh, item four is declarations of interest. Are there any declarations from members? If we start with Councillor Bolt. Yes, I'm the ward member for um, the last one, page 19. I've taken no part in any of the meetings um, or any discussion with the uh, application. Thank you very much. Councillor Evans. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am the ward member for uh, page five. I'm also an North Pelleton Town Councillor. Uh, I have not attended any of the planning meetings regarding this application and therefore consider myself not to be predetermined or predisposed. Thank you. Um, I'm probably. Could you just confirm which application? You said page five? Uh, it, on page one and page 19 are the, are the OK, I'm looking at page five, which is 37 slash 21 slash two. Oh, OK, fair enough. Fine, as long as we're so it's, it's the it's the application on page one. That's fine. OK, I, I, I think it's page five of the committee page. Understood. Page one of the report. OK, thank you. For that. <laughs> totally confused now. OK, right. Uh, moving on then, members, um, are there any other decorations? I'm not seeing any others indicated, so that's fine. Uh, we'll move on to the applications themselves, and I'll just pause at that moment. Right, if I could just check with Mr Herbert, are those working OK? Fine. OK, I think everyone everyone can now hear what's uh, what's taking place. So we'll move on to, as I say, the first application before us, uh, which is in North Petherton. And Mr Howlett, would you like to introduce this, please? Thank you, Chairman. I'll just share my screen. If you could just let me know when you can see the presentation. It should be flying up to you now. Yes, I've got your cover screen now. OK, great. OK, so first application then reference 3721-00002 at one Viking close North Peverton and the proposal is for the erection of one dwelling. Um, in, in terms of the application, it's in front of members today because of an objection from North uh, Peverton Town Council and their objection was based on inadequate arrangements for dealing with sewage and drainage and I'll pick that up at the end of the report. Uh, there are no further updates to the report. So moving on to main considerations, uh, the report in front of members today sets out the main considerations, which uh, include the principle of putting a new dwelling in this location, 
the size, scale and design of the new dwelling, um, any impact on the amenity of occupiers and neighbouring properties, including any overlooking issues, um, and also look at, looks at the highway aspects of the proposals, including access and parking arrangements. And finally, as I said, uh, we'll pick up on the drainage considerations, which the town council have raised some concerns regarding. Okay, moving to the next slide. Hopefully that's come through. Someone will tell me if it doesn't. Um, it, this is an aerial plan uh, of the of the site. So the site is indicated by the yellow star, as you can see here. Um, it, in terms of where we are, we're out uh, out at Willstock. So a couple of things to point out on this slide. So here is the the proposed building plot. This is Road Lane. Um, this house here is the what the what was referred to as a host dwelling or main dwelling within the report. Um, there was a nursery that used to be run from that building. That has now moved to a new nursery building that was consented to the rear of the main house. And as I say, the building plot is going in here. Um, members may recall that there was a previous application back in 2018 that granted consent for the nursery building with a flat above it. It came to committee. Um, that proposal also included widening existing access and realigning it um, in terms of the access off of Road Lane. The current application is to put a dwelling on an area which is currently used as a, as a parking area for the main dwelling. It, you can just make it out. There is a secondary access here that as part of the nursery consent would have been stopped up um, as part of that nursery consent. So that access will be stopped up eventually. And as you as you'll come to see on the layout plans, uh, the new dwelling plot will be served by the um, realigned nursery and uh, access that was consented as part of the nursery schemes. The plans will hopefully make that a bit clearer when, when I show you it in a minute. In terms of the wider context, as I say, it's the residential estate uh, development that's uh, par Park Willstock. Um, we're out on the extreme northwestern part of, uh, of Willstock and South Bridgewater development. Members may recall that as part of the South Bridgewater development, this linear piece of land was excluded from that uh, overall development and there have been some more recent attempts to put um, six and seven dwellings on this land to the rear which have been refused based on the intensification of uh, road lane in terms of that number of additional dwellings using uh, road lane and also um, because of residential amenity issues and you can see in terms of the um, sensitive location the nearby properties of cornflower close run along the eastern boundary, northeastern boundary, and then you've got Jasmine Close running along the southwestern boundary of the site. And as I say, the building plot's indicated by yellow uh, on, on the screen. However, this application is for a single dwelling. It would utilise, as I say, that existing access that currently serves the host dwelling and the nursery building to rear. Um, the site's located within the settlement boundary for, for Bridgewater, and therefore it's considered acceptable uh, in terms of residential development in principle uh, and the local plan policies and the MPPR. So just moving on to existing and proposed layout plans, the top image uh, on the screen shows the um, uh, shows the existing arrangement. So you can see the main dwelling shown here. The building plot is outlined in red. The red line is not particularly clear, but so the red line covers the access in and around the back of the main dwelling into the building plot here and obviously there's the nursery at the back. The previous nursery consent showed eight parking, it shows six parking spaces on the screen, but it actually showed eight parking spaces along here. Um, the proposed building plot uh, is, as I say, outlined in red on this side here, and you can also make out the existing access that as, as part of the proposal and as part of the previous consent for the nursery would be stopped up. So the bottom image, image sets out the uh, layout, proposed layout, so you can see the new dwelling uh, shown here. Just to make it absolutely clear as part of this presentation, because it, it may get confusing if members don't appreciate this, the, the back of the property is looking towards road lane. So this is actually the back of the property and the front of the property will face into the into the plot itself. It will be it will become apparent as I as I present, but it's really important, particularly in terms of the balcony situations, because uh, you may not, you won't be able to make it out from here, but this section here is quite an extensive balcony that will look across to to Road Lane. But I'll come on to that when we get onto the elevations. So the new dwelling would be served by the revised access to the nursery consent shown here, um, but altered then to allow circulation in behind and to serve what are now eight parking spaces in this location 
and the parking um, arrangement is altered again for the nursery for six spaces, four here and two here. So in total, uh, the proposal for the dwelling alongside the consented nursery and main dwelling showed parking spaces for 14 vehicles in total, three of which have been confirmed to be used by the new dwelling. Um, the layout also shows the stopping up of that secondary access and also how it links a pedestrian path will then link into uh, a link that goes into Willstock itself. So um, providing the betterment that the nursery um, consent was, was um, based on. So that will allow a footpath link across the site and also into the wider Willstock development. Um, as the report notes, County Highway Authority have not raised any objections subject to um, recommended conditions to the rise scheme in terms of the parking amount and the layout, uh, nor is there any concern raised regarding the intensification of the access from Rogue Lane on the basis of it being a single dwelling, um, or the use of the shared drive situation to serve this property uh, as well. So effectively, Highway Authority are happy and therefore we don't consider there are any outstanding highway issues uh, to be addressed as part of this proposal. Dwelling itself uh, is seen to have a reasonable level of amenity area, front and rear garden, so front garden this way, rear garden this way, um, uh, with generous proportions similar to, to what's around on the adjacent uh, residential areas, in fact, a bit more, a bit more generous in, 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 in many, many cases. Moving on to the elevation, so just to confuse you further, this is actually the rear elevation um, that's up first. So this will be the elevation that is orientated to look towards road, road lane. It's quite reflective of the area in terms of gable detailing um, on, on the dwellings, particularly the new development associated with Willstock and also the main house, the host dwelling Willstock Gardens is also uh, characteristically shown with, with gables. So the overall, overall design of the, of, of the dwelling in terms of the massive scale is quite similar to um, surrounding development, including the, the main dwelling and the and the, indeed the nursery building as well. As the plan shows, overall height to the ridge would be just under eight meters, which again is not dissimilar in terms of scale to to what's around the site. Um, use of glazing uh, is is something slightly different. Um, adds a bit of a contemporary feel to to the property itself. And in terms of materials, it's uh, it's planned to use uh, insulated concrete uh, form uh, form work, which is quite an energy efficient. Um, way of, 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 of building in terms of building material um, and red or red or black tiles to go onto the property as well. So although the scale of massing is quite characteristic to what's going to be around uh, in terms of the context, uh, it does have a bit of a contemporary feel to it, which uh, fits comfortably because it, it does meet that scale of massing test of the surrounding development. This uh, elevation also also shows that extensive balcony area that you can see across the single storey element at the back, which again become a bit clearer on the side elevations. Um, just to reiterate that this balcony will be looking across road lane into the fields beyond and countryside beyond, not back into the plot itself. And then this is the front elevation. Um, so this will face into the site towards, but not directly at the nursery building. Um, again, similar design approach as you'd expect, gables and, and glazing uh, predominantly. Uh, there's a smaller balcony proposed at the front of the property. There is a privacy screen that needs to go in there because there is a stagger on the um, on the gables, which again I'll show you on the next slide. So there is a privacy screen that will avoid any uh, overlooking of any of the adjacent properties along Jasmine Close. Um, and I'll just move on to the next one. So yeah, just to pick up on that point. So that privacy screen, which is shown here on the front of the property, is effectively in here along that way there. Hopefully you can see my cursor. And then you can see the balcony on, on the front and uh, side. So uh, this is looking across the plot. So looking across the plot towards the main dwelling, this would be the side elevation. Um, shows that stagger of gables. So you've got a stagger of gables here, which is shown here, uh, but also um, shows that extent of the balcony. So going out about 4.4 meters across that single story element. The and again showing that privacy screen there. As I say, rear balcony will look outwards to the wider fields and uh, across road lane. This balcony will only look this way with a privacy screen this way here. Uh, in terms of other potential amenity issues, uh, there are no windows to uh, the side of either the main house, Wilstock Gardens, or the closest properties of Jasmine Close or any first floor 
windows to the side of the new dwelling either, so that will minimise any overlooking effects. Uh, first floor windows will look either northwestwards across Road Lane, so the main windows will look that way or that way again. Um, so again, not hugely sensitive. The closest property this way back in terms of any potential overlooking would be the nursery, but you've got 17 metres between the new dwelling and the boundary of the nursery building. The orientation of the other buildings makes it more difficult to, to have any overlooking issues in terms of relationship with Jasmine Close. Um, and on that basis, and taking into account the treatment of the balconies, it's, it's not considered that any overlooking or similar amenity issues would arise from the proposal. Other concerns have been raised about construction disruption during, during the building of the dwelling, but as the report states, this is only a single dwelling and subject to a suitable construction management plan condition, which is proposed as part of the report. Uh, it's not considered that that would be reasonable for refusal, reason in its own right. And then moving on to the floor plans, Again, the report notes the proposed dwelling is what we refer to as an upside down house. So the bedrooms are on the ground floor. So bedrooms, bathroom, gym would be, sorry, uh, would be on the ground floor. Sorry, yeah. Uh, and then upstairs, you'd include the kitchen diner here and the living room as well. And then that obviously creates the balconies on the single story elements as well. Um, main outlook for the building, as I say, would be to the rear over road lane its countryside and with the dining and living spaces accessing the rear balcony which proposes a large amenity space so you've got you know the windows here would come out to the balcony they're looking across into the wider countryside looking back up towards the nursery you've got a kitchen diner and a living room window here which is set back but some distance as i've said 17 meters from the edge of the dwelling to the boundary of the nursery property and that's can be increased further by the two meters set back of that living room window here. So just some photos around the site. So the top uh, photos looking north eastwards along Road Lane. Um, so this is Road Lane here. You can see main house in the background. So this is the main Woolstock Gardens property here and secondary access. So the building plot is effectively in this area here and then the properties of Jasmine Close. So you've got two properties at the end of Jasmine Close, one that fronts onto Road Lane um, with a garage building here, and then a gable orientated property uh, just uh, just to the right here. Uh, the bottom photograph, again, looking into the secondary access, you've got the property at Jasmine Close here in its garage, the main house here. Building plot is effectively in this area here. Uh, it's also probably worth noting on these photographs the gable um, predominance of the, of the dwellings around, particularly the the main house and the new the new dwellings. Uh, this is uh, more recent photos of the site whilst the nursery building has been under construction. So the top is again looking at the main house on this side, looking back towards Jasmine Close. Here's the secondary access here, building plot somewhere in this location here, and the Jasmine Close properties here and, and that garage that I referred to previously here. So looking across the plot. And then the bottom photograph is at the is back. This is the nursery building here. So this is looking back towards Road Lane through that secondary access. Jasmine Close property here, main house here. OK, and then just further photographs again, both taken looking across the building plot here. So main house here, Cornflower Close properties over here. And then the building plot is effectively here where just just in, in, in the foreground here. And then a, a slightly higher, longer view showing that building plot in this sort of location here. OK, so in terms of conclusion, then principal development, as I've said, the site is in the development boundary and therefore considered acceptable in terms of um, its principle in, in policy terms. In terms of size, scale and design, although it's unusual in terms of being effectively the wrong way round and upside down, it, it does reflect the local characteristics in terms of scale, massing and design, particularly the gable detailing. Um, the use of glazing and a more contemporary take uh, fits well within the context of the result in, in, in our view. In terms of impact on adjacent properties, the dwelling plot benefits from no direct overlooking effects to the front and rear. To the rear toward road lane, to, to the rear it looks towards road lane and faces fields in the wider countryside, and to the front it will look, as I say, back towards the nursery, but again some distance away and does not directly look towards it. Balcony areas raise no significant issues subject to the inclusion of a privacy screen on, on that front modest balcony. In terms of highway safety, 
carries forward mostly the um, betterment in terms of access revisions that were secured as part of the nursery consent, including the stopping up of that existing access and the completion of a footpath link back into Willstock itself. Um, parking provision is considered adequate um, in terms of quantum for the properties, and there's no objection from the highway authority. In terms of drainage considerations, as I said, this was um, something the town council objected to previously. As part of the uh, nursery construction, I think there were some local concerns about potentially some drainage issues uh, whilst it was under construction. Um, the applicant is currently discharging the drainage condition for that, um, that scheme. In terms of this scheme, the statutory consultees are satisfied the site can be adequately served and have requested the details to be confirmed by a condition, which is you know, pretty normal standard. So again, we don't see there's any reason to object on drainage issues um, in terms of the current application. So subject to the recommended conditions on the report, there's no objection to the application and it's recommended for conditional approval. Thank you. Thank you very much. As you'll see, we have a speaker on this uh, application. So uh, if I could ask uh, Solvik Curran, if you could turn on your microphone. And we'll just check that it's working, OK? If you could just check it's working. OK, thank you, Chairman. Yep, we can hear you OK. So again, to remind you, you've got the three minutes. You'll hear the bell go when you've got a minute of that time left to go. So start whenever you're ready. Thank you. Uh, yeah, hello, I'm Silva Karan and I'm the applicant and we are currently living in the in the main farmhouse. And uh, when we moved in, it was all farmland. Uh, but now it's all a part of Willstock uh, village and the plot we are currently applying for building a new house has currently been used as a car parking space for Willstock Garden Chalker. But because we built a new building now uh, behind where the barn used to be, that uh, space is just not used for anything. It's just loads of gravel and it's just like left there. And the closest uh, neighbour in uh, Jasmine Close, they uh, have expressed it's much better to have a properly developed house and a garden instead of just a big area of gravel and as part of the condition for the new nursery that access you saw uh, like the double gate has now been closed off by a fence which we are working on making like uh, better but that's all closed off so if you look at the picture now at the bottom you can see that uh, double access which we used to drive in is now closed off so that whole site now is in use for nothing and because this is in that designated area for building we think it'd be much more appropriate to develop it into a nice looking house um, and a, no a nice garden instead of just have a gravel area and we hope the councillor will look uh, favourable at this application and also you can hear we have got the objection from North Pedersen Council regarding drainage issues and uh, the reason for that is uh, it, on the, the cornflower close on Barbary uh, Road used to like on that side of the property it is like a big um, uh, like uh, retaining wall because that was all digged out for clay digging so Blorholm put a big retaining wall up and the neighbours living on that side has had some drainage issues in the garden and they, they uh, uh, but before we applied for the nursery building, they already said they have drainage issues, but we hope to improve the site will help the drainage issues and not make it any worse. And this property here is facing road lane and not the area uh, with the retaining wall. So, and also we have a really big area of land. We have 21 neighbors, so it shouldn't be any problems making enough space for, for drainage. So uh, we hope uh, you overlook uh, uh, this is a good use of the site instead of just a uh, loss of gravel with a close-up gate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Members, any comments or questions, please? Councillor Evans. Thank you very much. It's the challenge of, of uh, remembering to unmute when you're actually in a meeting is is is, is bizarre um thank you very much officers for, for a very clear um, presentation and report um in principle i am in favor of this but i do look at this site and think what a shame it couldn't be accessed from the willstock development rather than on road lane i think um that, that that's a that's a disappointment but where we are really where we are 
Now, I did have my reading glasses here somewhere, and I've now managed to run my head. Thank you. <laughs> um, in terms of the rear balcony, I just wanted it's, it's a very substantial rear balcony, and I just want to check that there's no overlooking as of in the back garden onto Jasmine Close. I think it was slide six. Um, if Mr. Hula could put that up. I'm just the, the way I'm I'm reading that is there would be a line of sight onto the rear garden of the last property on Jasmine Close. So I just just like clarification as to why there appears to be no privacy screening on the rear, although there is on the fronts. Um, and from the photographs, we can see that there are trees that are in front of that large balcony. Can I just check that those trees are remaining as part of the scheme, please? Um, I all the neighbours who have commented and, and the, the the comments on the portal are quite interesting. They all comment that there's been an increase in the bogginess of their garden since development at this site commenced. I understand the concern that they have with this seeing another development on this site that this will again make this this situation more serious and although I do I do acknowledge that it's being addressed by condition um, I can I, I, I do urge officers to look in very close detail at whatever scheme comes forwards um, to see whether it, we can improve the situation for those residents. I notice on the report on page 11, it, it kind of implies there's been no change to the, the drainage of the surface water in the area. Uh, that's not the lived experience of the, of the neighbours um, who, who are saying that it has definitely got worse since that development has happened. There should be a solution to that. I'm sure there is a solution to that, but we need to make sure that the amenity of the neighbouring properties is confirmed, please. Um, and I also heard Mr. Hulett talk about um, a further application which refused for more houses on the wider site. Can I confirm whether this plot was included as part of that development? And are we confident that we're not just seeing a salami slicing to test what would and wouldn't be an overdevelopment of this site, which was the reason for a refusal? given for the larger application. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Mr Howlett. OK, I'll just I'll just go through those individually. So um, in terms of the privacy screen, uh, it's a good point. I, I mean, the, the properties are slightly orientated and, and they're, they're they're all slightly at a, a different angle. This layout plan probably looks worse than the actual photo. I'll just go back to the photographs and you can see that this building is sort of turned away from it and you've got this garage building so the balcony would effectively be looking sort of across this view here across into the garage uh, across the garage I, I'm, I mean there's obviously no windows or anything on the side of the dwell uh, side of this elevation I mean if members were concerned we could we could add as a condition if there was a concern about overlooking I, I think um, given that you know the, the the way the building is orientated this way okay you could sit here and look that way but actually what you're going to see is the garage i suppose is is you know would be which is why we've probably not felt the need for a privacy screen obviously on the on the front back front on the front of the property um that there is a need for the privacy screen there because you could then look across this way but um our view it wasn't considered necessary Obviously, members could take a slightly different view on that, um, accepting it's quite an extensive balcony. Uh, the next issue, uh, so in terms of trees remaining, yeah, the, the trees are shown uh, on the slide here. They've not been taken out as far as I'm aware, and, there's, and they're shown as being kept as part of the, uh, the application form. The drainage points are agreed. I think both schemes are still under consideration of the drainage consultees, so there is an opportunity to still address those issues. And obviously it is standard practice for a development like this that we would provide, we would ask for a condition um, and ask for details to be agreed by the drainage consultees, but we could certainly um, make sure that the uh, comments of Councillor Reynolds are noted as part of the minutes to make sure that when we are looking to discharge those conditions, we're aware that members have an interest to, to make sure there is a proper solution there. Uh, in terms of the houses, uh, additional schemes for houses, the truthful answer is 
I'm not sure. I don't think so. It's uh, because it's this piece of land here that was being promoted, and I think it was being promoted off of this access here again. So going further into the site, and there's two schemes: one for six, and one for seven. Um, sort of granted round about the same, sorry, refused round about the same time as as a nursery. But I'm afraid I don't have the details in front of me on on that. But um, I'm guessing not. Okay, but this is for a single plot anyway, so you know we have to treat it on its own merits. Um, I think that was it, Councillor Revens. But happy to come back if there's anything else. There was some further information about the drainage and avoiding further boggy impact on neighbours. Yeah, sorry, I think I covered that when I said the, the schemes were um, both under will be uh, both under the consideration of the statutory consultees as part of the condition discharge because the, the nursery condition discharge is ongoing as well. This one obviously requests details, which would then have to be approved by the statutory drainage consultees. Thank you very much. Councillor Evans, did you want to come back at all? Uh, yeah, I just um, I'd, thank you for the kind offer of adding a condition on the privacy screening. I would like to pursue that if I may. And I just wanted to double check the wording um, on the drainage as to, uh, at what point will is it pre commencement condition or I'm just just scrolling down to look at the small print at the moment. Uh, yes, drainage is always pre commencement. So let me have a quick check of what it says. Um, so it's condition seven on page eight. Before development hereby permitted commenced details of the proposed foul and surface water drainage system should be approved in writing. And then it goes into quite some detail in terms of the design details that you would expect to see as part of that condition discharge. Is there any way that we can strengthen the condition here to ensure that? The drainage works are in place before the construction so that we don't make a situation that is ongoing with the neighbours' properties any worse while the construction of this property is going ahead, um, bearing in mind the, the difficulties they've experienced over a number of years with this, please. Mr Howlett? so the, the the drainage works themselves would be part of the construction process in itself so you wouldn't normally ask for it to go in first because obviously it's part of the part of the overall construction process it, it is normally the first thing that goes in in terms of the drainage schemes my concern is that the current construction works on site have clearly had a negative impact so far and they've gone in first and that's what's worrying me is that we will make a situation worse and that will impact on on neighbors i'm just trying to get that I, I, yeah. having having read those concerns from the neighbors the concerns yeah. of the town council i just want to make sure that they are properly addressed yeah. in this process and if there's any way we can strengthen that up in condition seven um i would be i would welcome your professional advice shall we say Talent. okay I, I i understand the issue i, I think the problem is you've got a problem that's not necessarily associated with this application as the applicant said it's on the other side of the, the site i think as well we have to take into account that the nursery um, element is under construction and, and when schemes are under construction the drainage it doesn't drain as well as it will do when it's when the, the property's finished finalized and the, and the drainage schemes allowed to work because obviously you've got piled up uh, soil and land and, and those sort of things which which can create problems and that's often the concerns on many construction sites so in my view in terms of looking at this application I, that condition is what we would normally expect to see on a single dwelling in terms of having the details um, signed up to I think in terms of whether or not it, it gets undertaken in the right way then that's a, an issue for the council in terms of its compliance and monitoring side of things thank you I've got councillors Kingham and councillor Pierce. So councillor Kingham. Yeah, thank you, chairman. Um, I think council, uh, sorry, Mr. Howlett has given a good um, view of, of the application and I think he's explained it very well. Um, obviously with conditions regarding the drainage, I think are in place. The land drainage officer has, has recommended the conditions. And as Mr. Hayler explained, when you've got construction work in various areas, you do get problems with drainage. And uh, with conditions in place, I would like to um, move the recommendation, Chairman. 
and can I just confirm, Councillor King, and does that include the additional condition that, that um, Councillor Evans was suggesting about the uh, the privacy screen on the balcony? Yes, Chairman. Okay, thank you. Uh, I've got then Councillor Pierce followed by Councillor Facey. Councillor Pierce. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I with the explanations on the drainage, I don't have a, a problem with this application, but the report alluded to environmental um, aspects of the building and I'd just be interested to know what they are, please. Thank you, Mr. Howlett. Uh, I think it relates to the materials. It's the it's insulated concrete formwork. I, I'm no expert in that type of material, but it's a very energy efficient way. It means you don't need to pour as much concrete. It's uh, it's effectively a bit like polystyrene, I believe, in terms of it's, it's a very modern construction. So that's where the energy efficiency will come come about. Thank you, uh, Councillor Facey. Thank you very much. Are there any other comments or questions from members? I'm not seeing anything in which case. Yes, I am um, Councillor Bolt. Just um, on this privacy screen, uh, 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 will that re recommendation require the privacy screen to be the whole of the four point whatever it is meters or only so far as covering the view of the garage? I just want to clarify that. Mr Howlett. Yeah, it's, a good, it's a good question and one that I should have sought clarification from because uh, otherwise we could be at mixed uh, purposes. I was assuming that it would just be a privacy screen along this this part here. And, and perhaps on both sides, but um, it, otherwise, I think if you if you're going too far around, one, it's probably un, unreasonable, unnecessary, and two, it'll look awful. Yeah, we come to Councillor Evans. Yeah, it was only my intention to um, protect the privacy of the neighbouring property. It wasn't it wasn't to to um, build a fortress around it. So yes, I'm, thank, thank, I'm grateful for Councillor Bolt for his clarification. So just just to confirm that. Mr. Howlett, we're we're looking at the the lines that are in in, in the same direction as the as the property, not not the, the going fine. around the front of it. In effect, that where the where the direction changes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is everyone happy that they know what we're not, we're voting on? So the recommendation to grant permission has been moved and seconded with the additional condition of the the, the privacy screen. Uh, Mrs. Nicholson. Did I miss who seconded? Was it Councillor uh, Bolt? Seconded. No, it was Councillor Facey. OK, thank you. That's all right. So in which case, all those in favour of that to grant permission, please indicate. Yep. So that is unanimous. That is clearly carried. So permission is, is granted. Thank you very much. Right, if we just take a, a, a moment to al to allow the members of the public, if you wish to leave, you, you certainly can, but we'll just take a couple of moments. Right, if, if members are, uh, are members happy that we take a, a five minute comfort break to allow members to uh, have a five minute comfort break? <laughs> so. OK, we will we will do that. We'll restart at just after half past. Right, members, if we can uh, restart. So if you can t uh, just to check, as, as we say, the, the item on page 12 uh, has been withdrawn from the agenda because the, the parish council withdrew their objections and therefore it's been decided as a as a delegated application. So if you turn to page 19 within the report, which is the application for Wemden, and I believe Mr Howlett you're presenting this one as well. That, that's correct. So I'll share my screen again. Just let me know when it comes up. Yeah, we've got your cover sheet now. Okay, great. Okay, so this application is 51210010. Um, it's for a proposed conversion of loft into second floor accommodation, and the erection of a single story rear. Um, extension to the north elevation to, uh, to create a sunroom uh, and that's at 4A Blakes Road, Wemden. Um, I was going to say Bridgewater but I get shot for saying that so 4A Blakes Road, Wemden. Uh, in terms of main considerations, uh, the applications before members because Parish Council have objected to the bulk of the extension having an unacceptable impact on the 
adjoining properties, the full height window and Juliet uh, balcony, and any potential overlooking they may cause. And it's considered, they, sorry, the parish council considered uh, considered that to be contrary to policy D25 of the uh, local plan, and that the roof windows on the front elevation impact on the street scene, which is contrary to the Wemden neighbourhood plan policies. Um, there's no updates to the report other than to correct a paragraph uh, in the report on page 22 under highways issues. Um, the, the sentence states, uh, I think, the number of bedrooms will not be increased by the proposal. Well, actually, the Dormer extension will increase the number of bedrooms of the property from two to three, but I'll, I'll pick up the detail of that as part of the presentation. So, in, obviously, then, following on from the Parish Council's concerns, the main issues relate to visual appearance and design of the proposals and the impact on the street scene, but also on the amenity of any adjacent properties. Uh, and the presentation will cover that. And then in addition to that, as an extension to an existing property, there's also a need to consider any impacts on highway safety and parking provision. So in terms of locating members, um, this is quite a close location plan. There's a, a wider view in, in a minute, but uh, we're at the northeastern part of Wemden Village. Uh, the application sites shown in red, situated along Blakes Road. Lakes Road runs westward and then northwards out of the village into the surrounding countryside for those of you who know the area. Um, the actual application site forms the western um, most property of, 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 the, of a block of three terrace properties that front onto Blakes Road and then it's semi-detached um, to the to the west of, of, of the couple, couple of pairs of semi-detached. Uh, as I understand it this was originally a, a pair of semi-detached as well and, and about 11-12 years ago um, the properties were subdivided to create this additional um, property so it was extended and then subdivided to create these three dwellings out of it and some of the plans that you'll see will reflect some of that that's the reason for explaining that all three properties as part of this terrace block have got these hard standing areas at the front which provide um, off-road parking areas and then on the other side of Blake's Road you've got quite a mix of different types of dwellings both in style detached semi-detached but also various styles and ages as well so it's quite an eclectic mix around here although you, you know it's quite a predominantly linear type of uh, element uh, sorry linear part of the village um, as the slide shows there's also a rear access track i think you can make that out for the cursor it doesn't quite reach into 4a and there's a private field to the rear of this application site but there is a rear access that serves these properties but not the application site as i understand it um, sites within Wemden settlement boundary uh, and a, as an extension to an existing property principally the application is obviously supported by the local plan policies um, provided uh, the consideration of detailed matters meet uh, meet the detailed policy aspects in terms of design visual impact etc so moving to a wider location plan just to help orientate you again in terms of where we are in Wemden so Blake's Road is here application site here the church St George's Church is here so Church Road runs off from Wemden Rise along into, into Church Road, into Blakes Road, and then, as I say, out towards Chilton Trinity, that area, uh, into the countryside. You've got the church here, you've got the parish centre shown here, and then this is the cricket ground, Wemden Green here, and then you've got footpath links um, from Wemden into the ND, onto the NDR and into Bridgewater going this way. So that's just to give a bit of context, really. Um, also, it shows, as I said, that sort of linear nature of this part of the village, very linear. OK, in terms of the layout, so uh, this shows components of the proposal. So what you've got is this is the property itself at the moment. Large proposed dormer, pretty much full width on the back rear slope and then a rear extension projecting into the garden this way. Uh, there is already an existing lean to it's, it's very much a, a, a mirror match of this property here which is number four so this is 4a this is number four at the moment and i'll show you the existing layout so the back of the property ends here with this sort of single story lean to the proposal will extend again full width at ground floor single story only into the rear garden uh, the length of the extension that's proposed is 7.1 meters in total from the rear elevation of of, of the main dwelling but as I say taking into account the lean-to that exists there at the moment it would equate to an additional projection of around five meters and the width is pretty much full width but 4.7 meters across the width of the property uh, what's less apparent from this proposal is that there's also a proposal to hip uh, sorry to remove a hip and, and put, uh, replace the gable um, this part of the roof and I'll show you that in a bit more detail in a moment and then there will be some front roof lights as well 
onto the uh, onto the onto the front roof slope. But again, I'll show you some more detail about the moment. Uh, no proposed change to the front parking area. Uh, parking area. The parking arrangements will remain the same. Proposed dormer, although it would result in an additional bedroom in the roof, which would increase um, the number of bedrooms from two to three, the county parking standards in that case would say in zone B, which Wembley is, 2.5 parking spaces are required. There's easily two parking spaces on the site. Given the next door property, number four is a three bedroom property and has pretty much the same parking arrangement, it would seem unreasonable to object on the basis of half a parking space. Um, um, and, and so therefore we don't consider there to be any highway objection. Moving on to some photos before I show you the plans, because it's probably easier just to show what the property looks like at the moment, um, give you a better idea of the context. So this is 4A here, back of, this is the back of 4A here. This is the middle terrace, number four. Again, it's quite important to remember number four, because I've got some plans of, of that property in a moment as well. As you can see, you've got the hip going off at the moment. That would be replaced by a full gable, similar to what you've got at number six. Um, Blakes Road here. Um, also shows that existing lean to extension that exists at the moment as well. So, uh, you know, key changes on the rear would be uh, pulling the roof across its full maximum, having a large dormer uh, extension on the back, and then projecting this extension further into the garden with a pitch roof very similar, similar to number six, but obviously projecting further than the existing extension of number six. Bit of a closer view at the back of the property. Uh, doesn't really show anything greater than the previous one, but it, it gives it a, gives a better idea of the lean-to extension that already sits on the property at the moment. And then again, closer property, looking back at number six to give an idea of the projection of their existing extension, which um, is probably about three and a half, four meters back from the rear garden. So not not as extensive as as the one that's proposed at the moment, but in terms of style, quite similar in terms of height, etc. that it would be. And then moving to the front of the property. Um, as I say, what, what you'll see here again, lean to porch area at the front, but also the, the gable would go full width, obviously, as part of the roof. Um, and then there will be two roof lights in that elevation. And then again, just turn into a bit of context. Um, so again, just showing from the front of the property, the three the block of three. So number four is here, number four A is here, and that's number six that you've seen from the rear. Again, the gable would be extended over here and you'll have roof lights in the front elevation. And then just showing the parking areas really along the street. So here's the site here, this is number four A, number six here. Pretty similar parking arrangements all the way along in terms of hard standing in the front gardens. And then we move on to the floor plan. So this is the existing floor plans. It actually shows both number 4A and number 4. So don't get confused um, like I did um, when I looked at the plans. It's, it's So this is actually the application property here. They're separated by a passage at, uh, at lower ground floor, though it's infilled from the front, but you can still see it from, from the back. Um, and obviously it, it sort of comes back to the point about the properties were subdivided at a previous previous time. So it's a two bedroom property, number four A, two bedrooms here. Um, and then actually, it's, sorry, it's a three bedroom property here and three bedroom property in number four here. And then in terms of the actual alterations, this is again the application property at ground floor. So the extension will come off great kitchen diner area. And then obviously at um, at first floor, there will be two bedrooms and then an additional bedroom at uh, in, in the dormer extension will go into the roof. Okay, And then existing elevations at the moment, seen these through the photographs, but this is the front elevation and the rear elevation. And then going on to the proposed. Sorry, so proposed, go to the front first. What you see is the two dormer window, sorry, the two roof lights going in the front roof slope, obviously the gable extension. But you can also just see um, the top of the dormer that will be on the back. You can just, it just rises slightly above 
the ridge line. Now, at ground floor level or street level, you're not going to see that. Uh, obviously, from the plan, you can, but you, you won't see that when you're stood on the street because obviously uh, the angle would be very different. Uh, and then on the rear elevation, there's the dormer, full width dormer, Juliet balcony, a couple of windows as well, and then the extension going on here. And then the side elevation is the front of the property. So this is the front roof slope, roof light here, dormer window going on the back here, and then extension projecting into the garden here. Okay. Now, in coming to the conclusion that we, we consider the proposal is acceptable, we don't think there'll be any overlooking because actually there's already, if I'd go back to the slide before, there's already windows in the first floor here, putting them up in the roof isn't going to change the, the nature of overlooking that happens anyway. It's a Juliet balcony, so you can't look, you can't lean out or, or do anything other than uh, treat that as, a, as an additional window. So from an overlooking perspective, we don't think there's any significant impact on the neighbouring properties. Obviously, in terms of the extension, it's single storey. And, and again, as, as, as photographs have shown, there is already an extension on one neighbouring property. And the slides I'm going to show you is, is other consents which exist for uh, the neighbouring property as well, which also includes an extension on the back. So we don't think there's any amenity issues. In coming to that conclusion, we have taken into account a couple of previous consents that have been granted. So one for the same site, so this is number four, F4A, so the application site. This application, although it's not extant, it has expired, it does carry some weight because obviously seven years ago, we made a similar decision on, on certain aspects of the proposal uh, and design policies haven't changed significantly in those seven years. Um, so for, from this consent, you can see that the gable extension was consented. Also, the rear projection of, you know, a pretty much about the same length extension going into the back garden was also consented at single story. The only difference being a hip rather than a, a full gable on on the extension part. The the key difference really is the dormer because the dormer was quite a smaller dormer set below the ridge line and not quite full width, so it, it was smaller. But in terms of the extension, the gable extension, that, that would carry some weight in terms of the current proposals. It didn't have the um, roof lights on the front either. And then moving on to another consent, which is relevant, is this is a consent that was uh, approved for the adjacent property number four only last year. Um, and as you can see from it, it actually, although it had a rear single storey extension, it, is, it doesn't go as far as the one that's being proposed as part of the current application, but the dormer window is very similar. So we have granted planning consent for a dormer window that rises above the ridge line and goes pretty much full width for the mid terrace property of that row of three already. So we would say that that would have to give some weight in terms of allowing it for number four A as well. So it, indeed, the only matters really not covered by the previous consents either on the actual property itself or um, uh, the adjoining properties, the roof lights on the front of the property. Now they're going to be set flush. They won't be seen as a significant feature in the street scene, um, and in any case, could be permitted development anyway. So um, that's the reason for us recommending uh, consent. So in terms of conclusion, then, sorry, sorry, bear with me. Right, so in terms of conclusion on the rear elevation, it's a, again, this just shows a photograph of the rear elevation, but each of these properties in shot, number six, 4A and number four, have already either a rear projecting single storey um, extension existing on their properties or have previous consents for one. So um, both, both of these properties have consent for rear extensions. And then uh, number four and number 4A have dormers on the on their back elevation. Number 4A already has consent for extending the gable. Um, 4A doesn't have the consent for the extent of gable that's proposed, but number four does. Um, it's therefore considered the matters that, you know, these matters do need to be weighed quite heavily in the balance for, for this current application. So based on the history and given the neighbouring extensions, um, we don't consider there to be any undue harm as a result of the size of the extension. Whilst it projects further 
it is at single story level and, and therefore we don't think it would give any rise to any greater amenity impact and as i say there is already previous consent um, for, for something similar previously the dormer would result in windows within the roof but again this could be achieved through permitted development in any case and it's not considered to give rise to a detrimental le level of overlooking it would just look down the garden the same as existing first floor windows um, the alterations due to the location on the rear of the property again will minimize any visual impact and whilst you that dormer does rise slightly above the ridge line you're not going to see that from street level um, or uh, and there's no real long distance that that would become hugely apparent. Um, the property will retain the same level of parking um, as uh, as the three bedroom property next door and therefore no objections raised on highway grounds. So taking all those matters into consideration, um, we recommend permission granted subject to conditions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, as you'll see, we have a, a speaker present. So um, Mr Solomon, if I could just ask you to turn on your microphone and just confirm that it's working for us. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. That's terrific. So just to remind direction. you, you've got three minutes to address the committee. You'll hear the bell ring when there's a minute of that to go. So please start when you're ready. OK, uh, thank you. Uh, good, good morning, Chairman Bob, uh, councillors, uh, officers somewhere on the screen. Uh, Stuart, uh, many thanks for your time this morning. Uh, I'm Mike Solomon. I chair Wembden Parish Council. Uh, let me start by saying that the Parish Council doesn't object <clears throat> to every decision that our planning officers make, although it might feel that way sometimes. We actually agree with many of the decisions, but on this occasion, uh, the planning committee took a unanimous view that we considered this proposed extension was actually significantly larger than any of the other extensions on Blake's Road. And in fact, it did have a significant impact on neighbouring properties. It's just a kind of bridge too far. It's a little bit of everything. Um, the planning officer's report quite rightly says that it's similar in bulk and form to other extensions. It is in a way, but this is just a little bit more. Quoting figures, the proposed extension is 4.9 metres long. That's 60% longer than the three metres extension approved next door. So it's not trivial, it is bigger. Um, proposed roof structure is a gable end, and that adds considerably to the visible bulk uh, when compared with the hip roof that's there at the moment. Uh, and we see that actually as a contravention to Sedgemoor's policy D25, which says that new developments will not unacceptably impact upon the amenity of nearby dwellings. Uh, the proposal for, for, for dormer windows on the front roof isn't matched by any of the other properties along the terrace. And they only provide light into what appears at the moment to be an uninhabited attic space at the moment. Um, we think they do detract from the built form. Um, and, and that then is in contravention of the neighbourhood plan policy WB1. And that requires that any new developments demonstrate how they will contribute positively to the character of the existing built form. And also Sedgwick's policy D2, which says that development should be appropriate. The full high attic window and Juliet balcony is a very popular feature, but clearly if you live next door to one, then it will increase the amount of overlooking. There's no question. Uh, in summary, my council takes the view that the proposed development is not similar in bulk and form to the extension recently approved. Uh, it's actually over 60% larger. And whilst I absolutely accept the officer's statement and, and value his opinion on these, it is subject to judgment. I'm just asking you to look at it. I think it is in, my council thinks it's in direct contravention to three specific policies, WB1, D25 and D2. And for that reason, we ask you to just go back to the applicant and get something that's perhaps a little more in keeping with everything else along the street. That's all we're asking. Thank you, Bob. Thank you very much and, and perfectly timed. Right, members, any comments or questions I mean if I if I can kick off Mr Howlett just to ask a, a couple of questions if I it might um, in terms of the roof lights that's been mentioned whether they're in character with with the area I wonder if you could just highlight again whether there are roof light extension or, or roof lights within the front elevations of other properties in that patch and the other query I wanted to ask was you said that the dormer that we're looking at at the rear is similar to the one next door 
uh, I just wonder if if there is there any view of whether that has a cumulative effect in terms of having two box dormers right next door to each other on on a property of that nature. Okay, th thank you, Chairman. So uh, I, I I don't uh, there's certainly no roof lights along this part that I'm showing now, um, and and the semi detached. There's a couple couple more semi detached further along. Now, obviously, there are roof lights in the in the general vicinity, but not not certainly. If you're looking at the characteristic of that street scene, there isn't any roof lights in that area. Saying that, obviously, roof lights fitted flush can be permitted development and may not require planning consent. So it's not something that necessarily we would say would have a significant impact in this location. In terms of cumulative impact um, on the dormer and the dorm before, I guess it's uh, it, it's important to state they're obviously on the rear of the properties. There aren't any particularly long term views of the rear, rears of these properties. So it's not effectively going to be anything you're going to see from a significant public vantage point. So I would say it would be difficult to argue that, particularly as you've allowed one on the mid middle property. Um, so again, I, I don't think that you would be able to argue there's a cumulative effect. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from members, please? Yep, Councillor Bolt. <laughs> One for Mr. Howlett. Um, during your presentation, um, I'm not sure if I, I misheard you. Did you say if there was just the dormer alone, that that would um, come under permitted development? The roof lights. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I was getting confused. I was... Yeah, I, I happily happily explain, Councillor Bolt, because there's probably plenty of things that I um, uh, uh, didn't explain particularly well in that presentation. Uh, so the roof lights would be permitted development provided they're flush. The dormer for this scale, obviously dormers can be permitted development on the rear of properties, but for this scale, um, given its size and given it would be above the ridge line of the roof, will always require planning consent. A smaller dormer extension possibly wouldn't, depending on, on, on other factors, but it's the roof lights I referred to as being permitted development. Uh, there is one other thing, Chairman, I do need to clarify, um, because to my horror, as I was going through the applications, um, I, I, the, the slides, I did notice that actually this is an existing three bedroom property and will re be retained as a three bedroom property with just two bedrooms at, at um, first floor. So three bedrooms at first floor go into two bedrooms at first floor and one up in the roof. So it's the same number of bedrooms, which is why there's no objection on highway grounds because they're not increasing the number of bedrooms. So sorry, I misread the plan. I could see that number four had three bedrooms, but I I could only see two bedrooms on on number four A. But it's exactly the same situation. So sorry about that. C could you just illustrate that for us, Mr. Howlett, on the on yeah. the plans just for a moment? I think that would be helpful. So if I go to the existing floor plans, sorry, my mouse is on very sensitive. So these are the two properties. So 4A here, number four here. I saw the three bedrooms in number four, but I only saw two bedrooms in number 4A, but there's one here. So this is the existing situation. OK, so when we so it's existing three bedrooms on both properties with the extension, you've got two bedrooms. On the first floor instead of three, two bedrooms, sorry, three bedrooms on number number four, but an additional bedroom for number 4A above. So both properties end up with three bed, have still got three bedrooms. So if possible, if you could just go back to the previous plan, you're saying there's a bedroom at the top of this, in effect, at the top of the stairs currently. Yeah. yeah. OK. Thank you. Councillor Revens. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, yeah, I, I wanted to clarify the number of bedrooms. I think, uh, in fairness, Mr Hewlett, the third bedroom is so small at the moment. If it was in stock more, it probably would be called a study in order to get through planning permission. But hey, who knows? Um, and also, I do notice that, uh, yes, yes, I agree that calling Wemden Bridgewater should be a um, public execution offence. Um, but can I just remind you that you did refer to Willstock as Bridgewater earlier? And so um, be warned. Um, my concern, and I do listen to the comments of the parish council very carefully, is 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 the bulk of this extension, um, as um, has been pointed out the, by Mr. Solomon, the, it is substantially bigger than than what is proposed next door. Um, I am concerned about the overlooking aspect as well. Um, 
Mr. Hulot did say that it probably wouldn't be a significant increase in overlooking. However, if it's higher and if there's a Juliet balcony, I do I do do struggle with that interpretation. And I do note the comments of the neighbouring property owner that the view from the loft extension will completely take away my privacy in my back garden by 80 percent, if not more. So I do would, I, I do question whether whether the impact would be as as negligible as as is suggested. Um, I do I do think yeah, looking at this, I think it does dominate over the neighboring the, the neighboring properties as well as um, the street scene, even even though it's difficult to see from the road, it may 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 just be be slightly noticeable. I think from the rear and from the two neighboring properties, I think it would be extremely overbearing. Um, I do wonder whether the extension number four actually came to committee. Um, or, 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 or whether whether the parish council didn't object on that occasion, but I also noticed that the extension to number four doesn't include a Juliet balcony, whereas four A does, and that I think is also a distinct difference between the impact that they have. Um, so I'm uh, at the moment I am minded to vote against uh, uh, accepting this one on 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 the grounds grounds stated, and uh, I I I think. Uh, Council Solomon made a very good case on behalf of Wemden Parish Council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hallett. Yeah, just to pick up, really, I, I suppose from the overlooking effect, what what we're saying, even with Juliet Balcony, you are only able to look directly down the garden area, um, which you can do from the existing windows at the moment. I mean, Juliet Balcony is in, in the middle. The way the properties are laid out, they're all laid out in a row, so you are only looking directly back. You might be able to get some glimpse into the rear gardens but it won't be significantly different to what you've already got through the existing first floor windows in any case. I suppose the other thing to bear in mind is number 4a itself has had a previous dormer window agreed albeit smaller um, which I showed on the slide which I can quickly show again. Um, so, so that was approved previously which is set further up into the roof I, I get um, but also does include you know, a large window in the centre at that level. And that's, although, you know, to, to be absolutely clear, it's not an extant consent, it carries weight because we've made that decision previously, not because they can, they've got a fallback position that they can build that out, but it, it carries some some weight. And then, of course, in terms of the the one that's been approved at number four, I mean, again, you, you haven't, you're right, you haven't got a Juliet balcony, you have got a large central window. Um, which will be in a similar position to where that Julia balcony would be in relation to number 4A, um, which will look back down the garden. So I, I understand the concern, but I think in terms of the actual applications and consents that can be built out, and this one is extant and can be built out, um, I, I think it, it would be material in any decision if we were to recommend refusal on overlooking grounds. Uh, the other point you made um, was about whether it came to committee or not. It didn't come to committee. It was delegated decision, uh, and uh, you, know, you know, hindsight's a great thing, isn't it? But you know, the parish council supported that because, uh, and the actual words were supporting the extension of a of a small family home to help a growing family, and then this is exactly the same situation, I guess. So it didn't come to committee because it was actually supported by the parish council. But I, I appreciate things do change, and that's the same as number four. But that was the reason for number four being granted. Thank you. Anything else, Councillor Evans? Uh, no, thank you. I think uh, I think the scale, the scale and overbearingness, I think, are a matter of judgment, and and it's where you draw the line in that grey area. I think is the uh, is the pertinent point, and I think I respectfully disagree. That's fine. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from members, please? I'm not seeing any comment. Yes, I am, Councillor Pearce. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so I listened to the debates over the, the scale, but I think given the previous consents of a very similar nature, it's obviously sort of a trend along this road. And I think this road does um, contain sort of different styles of housing, as as was mentioned. So I am um, I'm happy to support the officer's recommendation on this one, and I will propose propose it. Thank you. I've got Councillor Facey. 
Yes, Chairman, I'd like to support Councillor Pierce. Thank you. I'm not seeing any other hands raised. So in which case we have the recommendation to grant permission has been moved and seconded. Those in support, please show. No, one, two, three, five, six, seven. OK, and those against, please show. Three. Three. And there are 10 in the room, aren't there? So that's all. So, yeah, there are. F so we have seven in support, three against. So the the recommendation is passed, which is to grant permission. Thank you very much. That, that brings us to the end of the applications before us. Uh, if we move on to the next part of our agenda, that is the section 106 major applications updates, which members have had circulated. Thank you very much. If members can turn to those items, it's, it's agenda item six. So, and what I think we're proposing to do, Mr. Howlett, is to uh, run through these and then you'll pick up if there are member questions on on any of them we go so the the first one we have is cokehurst farm 51193 are there any comments or questions on that one yes councillor bolt it's just a very quick one somebody in, in uh, wemden has said that they that they're looking to build a roundabout there as opposed to a traffic lights um would that have to come back to planning sorry that's really for stuart that's yes Yep. No problem. Mr. Hallett? Um I, I haven't heard I haven't heard that. Um if it if it's significant change, then yeah, it, it well they may have to apply for planning permission to do it, in which case if there was an objection it would come to committee. So we'd have to go through the normal delegated channels. So just because they might need to change something doesn't necessarily follow it would come back to committee unless it's part of the current application. So if the current application was to change significantly like that, then it would have to come back. So potentially, <laughs> but I've not heard that. OK, I'm not seeing any other questions on that one. So the next one is. Uh, the land north of Wedmore First School, Blackford Road. Not seeing any questions on that one. So we move on to land north of Axbridge Road, Cheddar. Could I ask a question on that, Mr. Howley? There's um, highlighted, it says county solicitor yet to be appointed. Do we know why that hasn't happened on, on this one yet? Mrs. Lehman, would you have any information on that? Sorry, Chair, I was just going to check my records to, um, to see whether they've been appointed. If you can bear with me. Yeah, no problem. It just if if they have it's it would have only been recently there has been a delay getting them to um to to the point okay i think you spoke for us all there councillor bolt <laughs> in terms of the deep <laughs> sigh it was Chairman, I, I haven't we were seen with you on that as of yet that's all right no worries <laughs> it's just you did exactly what i was thinking at the time <laughs> sorry mrs lehman Sorry, Chairman, I haven't seen an appointment as of yet. I did chase the county on Monday the 24th of May. OK, thank you for that. I'm not seeing any other comments or questions on that one. So if we move to Morgan House, Mount Street. No questions on that one I'm seeing. So that takes us to land to the south of Quantock Road, Bridgewater. Again, not seeing any questions on that one. So land east of Taunton Road, North Petherton Rugby Club. That's a decision issued on that one. And we've also got a decision issued on the next one, which is land at Brew Farm, Huntsville Road. And another decision issued on 
Payne Walk, Chilton Polden. And then to land east of Isleport Lane Highbridge. Okay, not seeing any indications. Uh, old Tile Works, decision issued. And then we've got land at Lakeside, Highbridge. Nope. Land at Will Abington, Hill Will Abington. Nope. Okay, over to land at Junction 24. Okay, Carrots Farm, North Petherton, and I think that's the last one on the list at the moment. So obviously, as you can see, there has been some progress on a number of them that we have got decisions issued. Uh, and obviously, there are a few other things that we're still chasing up. If there's no other comments or questions at that point, that brings us to the end of our agenda for today. Uh, what we're going to do is take a short comfort break, and then we've got an update in terms of, as you know, barn policy and uh, uh, an appeal decision, which we we're gonna run through with you as well. So we'll take that short break